Greetings from the Second Reformed Church of Hackensack. I invite you to join me in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, as we enter into your word today, we pray, Lord, a prayer of blessing upon it, that it will inspire our hearts and our minds and give us guidance, direction, and food for thought. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Old Testament reading comes from the book of Psalm, chapter 67, beginning with verse 1, and it reads, May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us, Selah, that your way may be known upon the earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the people with equity and guide the nations upon the earth. Selah. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading comes from the book of John, chapter 14 beginning with verse 23, and it reads, Jesus answered them, those who love me keep my word, and my Father will love them, and he will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives, do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you soon. If you love me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now, I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I come to you today with a sermon that I have lovingly entitled, A Legacy of Love. It feels like our days have merged into one long continuous day over these last few weeks. So much so to the point that many of us have taken to looking at our calendars or listening to the local news to figure out what day it is or even what the date might be. Looking at my calendar this week, I discovered that today is a very special day. It's Mother's Day, a day that was almost overshadowed by all of the things relayed in the news about the virus that we are coexisting with. But for this moment, for just this brief moment in time, I invite you to step away from all of that and join me in wishing our mothers a happy Mother's Day. And with that in mind, I want to use this time to offer a message of thanks and celebration 
to all the mothers and all the things they have done for us, to tell all the mothers how grateful we are for the love that you have shown us and your faith in God that made it possible, to show you how grateful we are for your discipline and the examples that you have set with us, for us, for the lives that you have lived. And most of all, for the many sacrifices that you have made for us. So how can we celebrate that? How can we celebrate a life that is so faithfully dedicated, just like the ones our mothers have given for us, especially in today's times where many mothers have become assistant teachers or in some cases, homeschool teachers to supplement what their children are trying to do through distance learning. Well, with all of that, all that our mothers have done, all that our mothers are doing, and all that we expect them to do, how can we possibly express our gratitude in the way that will measure up to the amount of unconditional love they have shown us. Beloved people of God, as I ponder this question, how I might answer it, I find myself reflecting back to our gospel lesson as well. I find myself asking a similar question. How can I express my love and thanks to God for all the things that Jesus has done for us. For the goodness of God and all that Jesus did by giving his life so that you and I may have an opportunity to one day make heaven our final resting place. Beloved people of God, Jesus gives us the answer to this question by the life that he lived and the legacy that he left for us to follow. Before he left to take his place at the right hand of God, to take his seat on his throne in heaven, Jesus left us a legacy of love, of peace, and of comfort. When his work on earth was finally done, Jesus said, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. And knowing that his presence would surely be missed by all those who found comfort in his presence, he said to them, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And as Jesus was putting all these things into place, he gave us the following instructions. Those who love me will keep my word. And those who don't love me will not. Beloved people of God, knowing all of the things that Jesus did for us by living his life as an example for us to follow, by being willing to give his life so that you and I may be able to one day make heaven our eternal home, how can we say thanks? Or better put, how can we celebrate Jesus and all of the wonderful gifts he has given to you and to me? The answer is simply this. We celebrate Jesus with our entire lives. We celebrate the sacrifice that Jesus made for us by living a life that is pleasing and acceptable to God. What does that mean? It means that we must dedicate ourselves to following God's greatest commandments, the one that reminds us over and over again to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second one that says to love those who God has blessed your life with the same way that you love yourselves, your neighbors. 
This, beloved people of God, is how we celebrate the legacy of love that Jesus left for us. By letting that legacy live on through us in the lives that we live and the things that we do. And more importantly, by passing that on to our children and teaching them to pass it on to their children so this legacy will never die. Beloved people of God, we do that by teaching through the examples of how we live our lives as people of God. We pass on that legacy through our faithfulness in attending church and studying the word of God. We pass on this legacy of love by sharing the love that God has shown you and me to everyone we encounter each and every day of our lives. And if we can manage to do that, know in your hearts and in your minds that Jesus' life and death that was given for you will not have been in vain. And that legacy of love that Jesus left will be passed on from generation to generation. A legacy of love that will continue to bless us each and every day of our lives as we live our lives in such a way that brings glory and honor to God. With that in mind, we turn our attentions back to our mothers who we are celebrating on this special day. And in answer to our original question, how do we celebrate the faithful life and the dedication that our mothers have given for us? The answer is this. First, let us acknowledge what they have done through their lives for us. Let's acknowledge how they have blessed us by just simply being and loving and caring for us. They have made sacrifices for us. When they wanted to go and do their own thing, we became their priority. We celebrate their lives as we acknowledge the times that they sat up worrying about us when we forgot to call home or we were off doing this or that. And even on those times when we laid sick in bed all night long, how they sat by our side and worried about us, caring for us, making sure that we were okay. And this list can go on and on and on. But then there's the second thing. We can show our appreciation by allowing our lives to be a living legacy of love that we celebrate as we do the following things. By living our lives in such a way that brings honor to our mothers, doing things that will make them proud of who we have become and all of the work they have put into making this possible. We do this by living a life that is pleasing to God because that's all our mothers wanted us to do was to be faithful to God and do all the right things. And then the last one. We do this by passing on the legacy of love that we received from our mothers on to our children so that they can pass it on to their grandchildren and then we share it with everybody we encounter. And of course, it is Mother's Day. So don't forget the cards and don't forget the flowers and don't forget the meals. Though we may have to maintain social distance, there's nothing wrong with doing takeout and sending your mom a really great bouquet of flowers, a nice box of candy, and a nice big meal. Beloved people of God, today, let us set aside all of the drama and the problems of the world and wish our mothers the happiest, healthiest Mother's Day that God can bless them with. Let them know 
that we are forever grateful for all that they have done, all that they are doing, and all that they will do for us in the future because we know that a mother's work is never done. And to all the mothers, allow me to leave you with this blessing, one that I have crafted using Psalm 67 as my model. And it says, may God be gracious to you and bless you and make his face to shine upon you. May your children praise you, dear mother, and may all the peoples praise you. May the nation be glad and sing for joy, for you have given a legacy of love to your children to guide them on this earth. May God bless you and keep you, and may your legacy of love be spread to the ends of the earth through your children and the lives that they live and everyone whom they touch. Amen.